Hello everyone and welcome back to a new video from XYZ Architect. I'm Marius and as I promised last time, today we are going to talk about the reference system. So without dragging the intro too much, let's get right to it. Why do we need reference systems? Well, on the left side, we have the machine reference system, right here. And let's say that you put a part on a machine table and the part is perfectly parallel to the machine system as we can see here. Right here. Okay. And you want to measure the distance of 50 millimeters. This is the ideal scenario, but in reality we cannot place a part perfectly parallel to the machine system and this will result in measurement errors. Okay, here we can see what happens when we sit the part on the table with an offset of 30 degrees to the machine system. Yes, it is exaggerated and yes, you will probably not see the part like this ever. But I had requests like this from colleagues that have nothing to do with 3D measurements and maybe this video will help you explain to them why it is not a good idea to uh, measure the part without a reference system. And as we can see, the result is catastrophal is 44.5 millimeters instead of 50 millimeters which is uh, very very large deviations from the nominal so no it's not good but if we use the reference system on the part or the alignment and it is also known we will have the actual value of the distance that we want to evaluate and in our case is the distance of 50 millimeters. So the reference system is utilized to define the position of the points in space. The position is given by the value of the three coordinates, the X, the Y and the Z uh, axis. The coordinate system has to be defined in order to have a unique relation between the value of the coordinates and the points taken to the part. We have three types of coordinate systems. The co Cartesian coordinate system, the cylindrical coordinate system and the spherical coordinate system. The last two coordinate systems are known better as the polar coordinate systems. The position of a point is defined by different values in this system. And we will talk about each of them separately. The first one and the most used one is the Cartesian coordinate system. Named after the one who discovered it, René Descartes in Latin, in Latin Cartesius, in this coordinate system, all three axes X, Y and Z are straight and orthogonal. A point in this system is defined by the value of its coordinates on X, Y and Z axis. Uh, I have found a website that helps explain better each system and it's called geogebra.org. In this example of the Cartesian coordinate system, we have a point in space defined by the values from the X, the Y and the Z axis as we see here. If we move the point up or down, the value from the Z axis changes. If we move the point left or right, the value from the X axis changes. And if we move the point front or back or in the back, the values from the Y axis changes. 
the cylindrical coordinate system, where a point is defined by three values, two distances and one angle, where R represents the distance between the origin of the coordinate system and the projected point. So right here, the origin of the coordinate system and the projected point on the plane, okay? Known also as the radius. Okay, the azimuthal angle right here is calculated between the x-axis, the x-axis and the imaginary line formed from the origin of the part and the point, the projection of the point. And the height, the z, represent, is, represents the perpendicular distance between the point and the y in the xy plane and let's see also the example in this example of the cylindrical coordinate system the point is defined by the r which is the radius of the point and as we see it here the r is now 10 so that's 10 millimeter in in a radius if we move it left and right we can see it that the value from the r changes okay it it's also represented by the height which is the z axis and if we move it up and down we can see that the value from the z axis changes and also it's represented by the azimuthal angle as we said if we move the point between the x and the y axis we will have also the azimuthal angle right here so the angle right here this is the way the cylindrical coordinate system works so let's move on to our last coordinate system the spherical coordinate system uh, where a point is defined by three values, one distance and two angle, uh, the, R and the R and the azimuthal angle is exactly the same as it is on the cylindrical coordinate system and we also have the theta angle known as also as the polar angle. Uh, the is the calculated angle between the imaginary line formed from the point and the origin of the x y plane. So here this angle. Okay, so let's see also the example for this one. Okay, so as we see in this example as well, we have a point in the spherical coordinate system now, and the point is right here. We have some values right here. If we move the value from the air, we can see that the radius. Okay, so the diameter, the radius, which is half of the diameter of the sphere changes and we can see it right now. Let's leave it at 2. Uh, if we move the azimuthal angle, we can see that it also changes the angle from here, from the x-y plane, between the x and the y axis. Okay, and we also have the polar angle, the theta, that also changes when we move the values from here. If we put it at 90 degrees, it will be like this. So it's straight 90 degrees. It's a straight 90 degrees. And if we set it to zero, it will be right in the center of the sphere. Okay, so this is the way the spherical coordinate system works. If you want to play more with the coordinate system, go to this site right here and uh, just search the coordinate system. Uh, so go to geogebra.org and search for each coordinate system right there. You will find them and you can play with them as long as you want. So let's talk about the planar, the spatial and the origin of the coordinate system. 
So in order to define a coordinate system, you will have to take three translations and three rotations. These are the six degrees of freedom for, for any alignment or coordinate system around the x, y, z axis. Two of these elements have to have the capability to take the rotations in order to define the reference system for the spi spatial and the planar alignment. These elements are a line, a plane, a cylinder, a cone, constructed lines uh, formed from geometric elements like uh, points or circles or so on. So, as we see here, for example, this is the Z axis, this is the X axis and this is the Y axis. We have rotations around the Z axis, around the Y axis, around the X axis and translations also for all of them. Okay, so let's say that uh, you want to make an alignment, a coordinate system. So for the sp spatial rotation, the level for uh, PCD misusers defines the plane where are situated two of the three axes of the coordinate system. It takes two degrees of freedom, more precisely two rotations. The planar rotation or the rotation defines the direction of one of the axes of the coordinate system. It takes one degree of freedom and it uh, and that is the last rotation. So when you do the spatial rotation and the planar rotation, you will take all three rotations from the from the coordinate system. Okay. Next, it will be the translations on X, Y, and Z. Okay. So you can use, for example, a plane. You can use also. Uh, a line for example and uh, some circles you can put the plane on spatial rotation or level it uh, then you can put the line on the planar rotation and you can put the for example the z axis origin on the plane the uh, x axis origin on the line and the y axis origin on the point or on the circle and you will take all six degrees of freedom from the part. In order to construct a, a part spe specific coordinate system, you will have to inspect the technical drawing for the datums uh, in feature control frames like this one. So, if you want to make an alignment, these are the datums right here. And this will be your geometrical elements in order to construct the alignment but we will talk about these ones in another video because they are more complex and i want to talk more about them this is all for now guys uh, i'm sorry that uh, it took so long to make a, a video another video but i was uh, uh, on holidays until now Okay, so stay safe and until next time, have a nice one.